folks so today all of you that have the ampere time batteries with the uh, that do not have the not with but without the low temp disconnect I'm going to show you uh, approximately about a $40 workaround that can uh, uh, remedy that and potentially save you from damaging your expensive batteries we're going to take this box of parts here and I'm going to show you how we can make one using simple relay and uh, temp controller and show you how to protect those batteries so without further ado let's get started okay so the idea for this is um, to put this relay uh, in line or to break the line coming from your solar panel to your charge controller so this is a normally closed um, relay between these two pins here so you have one leg of your uh, solar panel coming here and this leg would go to your um, charge controller and then the charge the uh, temp controller right here will uh, turn this relay off and on it would so normally close so if this gets below temperature then it's going to open this relay and stop charging therefore not damaging your um, your uh, your batteries so this is probably not going to show up well at all but this is a 12 volt 250 amp relay so more than enough uh, uh, current to be able to handle your uh, solar panels <coughs> this temp controller is just a simple uh, ITC 1004 you get these off Amazon or wherever you choose have set points and uh, it's also designed so that you can you know you can plug it in with a transformer like this or obviously it would be ideal to have it connected directly on your 12 volt batteries unless of course you uh, are running 24 or 48 volt uh, batteries so um, but I just did this for now you know it'll plug directly in my inverter um, Again, like I said, this normally closed relay, so it's not going to draw any power when it's in normal operation, unless it gets below freezing temperatures. This, on the other hand, is a 2 amp, uh, 12 volt 2 amp, so it could draw as much as 2 amp. So not not ideal to use this. Um, obviously, I don't <coughs> I haven't measured. It. I don't know how many amps it pulls during uh, you know regular operations. But like I said, best to have it hooked up to your your uh, your battery bank if possible so okay let's get going here put this thing together and see how it works um, as I mentioned this is a we'll be using the normally closed um, poles on this relay and as you can see, these these two are closed when the relay is at rest or not energized. Those two are open. And so what we'll do is just mount all of this onto this board here and connect it up. These two leads are for the controlling the relay and how this is wired is you have your 12 volts 12 volt lines coming in here to this these terminal blocks here. It's also you can see on the schematic 12 volt power supply. Then you have your sensor, your temp sensor here. And then you have heating and cooling. We'll be using the cooling or the heating relay. And what we're doing is, since it's a 12 volt relay, we have to get power to it. So we're going to take. Um, it's going to be a uh, negative um, break on this. It doesn't matter what polarity you use on this, just as long as you have 12 volts, it doesn't care. So we're going to have we have uh, uh, 12 volts will be going into one side of the relay. And then we have the negative going to this side of the temp controller, which will 
um, break the negative connection. So once the temp controller hits its uh, temperature set point, it's, it's going to um, engage this relay on the temp controller and therefore engaging the solenoid and uh, breaking the connection between these two. And uh, we'll show you more as we get things put together here. I'm going to use some of this uh, double-sided tape to stick this on the board and put a screw and probably some double-sided tape on this too. Hold that down and uh, see how that goes. Okay, so we are using this double-sided 3M, uh, let me get that cable out of the way, double-sided um, VHB, if you can see on the label, VHB tape, very high bond, so we'll uh, put it to the test here on a chunk of dirty plywood and see how well it sticks. And a little concerned about that, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, so far that is impressive. That is stuck very good, so perfect. Yeah, just trying to uh, locate this, you know, with the idea of keeping my uh, wires in mind as they, they connect and the support is hung up, so. And that too is stuck. I think that is going anywhere, so perfect. Okay, so next we'll make our uh, relay connections from the temp controller. Again, does not matter where these, where or how these go. Just plug under your solenoid. Our temp controller is connected to that. And you know that's steady enough. I'm not even I'm not even gonna put a screw in it. So next I'll connect this up and uh, we'll kind of do a mock-up of uh, of it hitting freezing temperatures with a, a thing of cold water. Okay, so we're plugged in here, power, and see our, it's pretty cold outside today. You can see our current temperature outsides, it's probably not showing up on the camera well, about 39 degrees. Press S and our set point is 36. So we need to go down about uh, three degrees for the temp controller to engage the relay. Again, let's take a look here and see if we are st still closed as we should be. And yes, yeah, so this would be normal operation, your solar system would be charging. Next we'll get uh, some ice water and simulate below freezing. Okay, so now we have a, it's about 38 degrees, the temp controller. So now we're gonna simulate um, by inserting this into the ice water to get it to go below our uh, set point of 36 degrees. So here we go. Get that underneath the ice cube there. Thirty-six. And there we hit thirty-six and just heard the relay click. This has a bit of a has a time delay on it. 
and that's programmed to do this so about 35 it should yep and I just heard it so now let's take our meter and we should read an open circuit and we do so now our uh, essentially our solar panels would be disconnected at this temperature so now we'll remove our lead take a look at our temp controller and see the temperature is climbing as soon as it hits 36 temp controller should open the relay again so warm it up it's pretty cold out here and I just heard it click so now we should be closed again simulating normal and if you can see on the multimeter we are once again closed so it seems to be working fine so the next step will be just to uh, connect our leads for our solar panel and uh, then we'll have uh, low temperature cutoff protection for our batteries so let's get it hooked up to our solar panels next Okay, let's see if we can get this baby mounted up here next to the charge controller. Put it right about there. Okay, that is mounted. Let's turn on our inverter here. Inverter is powered on, and let's plug in our 12 volt power source to our inverter. Forty degrees in here. All right. Next, let's get our solar panel hooked up to it to make sure my circuit breaker's off here. Get our other wire racked up over here. Okay, there we go. Go ahead and reconnect our power here. Okay, now you can see we're, we are powered up our 12 volt supply to our temp controller, in about 42 degrees. Our relay is connected. Currently, a circuit breaker is off for the solar. Let's go ahead and turn that on, and if uh, and if this circuit is working, this light should um, turn green right here.
And so we see since that light lit up, that means we have power coming in from our solar panel through a relay because we are above our set point uh, temperature in here. So, so that is working. So let's do the uh, cold water test and uh, see if it still works. Okay, you can see here now by the flashing uh, indicates we are full, we are charging at this point. So that's working. I've got my glass of ice water here sitting dangerously on top of my inverter. Let's take a look and see what, how much, we've got about 73 watts coming in. It's very, very cloudy today, so not the best solar output, but regardless, 40 degrees in this compartment where our ampere time batteries are stored that do not have low temp cutoff. Again, uh, um, you know, this is just a quick fix to remedy this. Um, if you buy these batteries rather than maybe paying extra for expensive one so let's simulate our below freezing we're set about 36 degrees on our temp controller let's put our temp sensor in the cold water and see the temperature dropping and there's the temp controller relay I just heard and there it is we are no longer charging so that concludes this works um, at yeah, 33 degrees, there's no charging. So simulating below uh, freezing temperatures so we won't damage our batteries. Let's pull this out and warm it back up. And now we heard our relays kick back on. Our charge controller light is on. Let's put it in one last time. And we see our temperature dropping. Just heard the temp controller click and just heard the relay click. And again, our charge controller is not getting any voltage. So we are not charging our batteries. Pull this out again, warm it up. relays have closed again and our charge controller so you can see this is working flawlessly uh, like i said i have it set about 36 degrees you know just have a little buffer in there but working perfectly okay folks again just to conclude uh, a fairly economical workaround for these um, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries that don't have low temp controlling uh, this, I think, may be $40 in parts into this. If you're interested, contact me in the comments below. I'll uh, set you up with a full uh, schematic wiring diagram if you're interested in the parts that I used. And so this is working great. I uh, have a space heater in there. I'm going to remove that so it's no longer needed. It's been getting below freezing temps here regularly. Um, this uh, compartment those batteries, ampere time batteries are in, uh, usually stays, you know, between 38 and 40 degrees, but we've gotten down to zero to where it's reaching freezing. So it's definitely some, uh, you know, some cheap insurance. So uh, that's it and hope you find this useful and uh, just let me know in the comments if you're interested in the parts or uh, wiring diagram. Thanks for watching. Thank you.